The new Apple iPhone 13 series has four models to choose from, and we've already reviewed the Pro Max model here on this channel, but what about the bog standard iPhone 13? Is this now the one to buy with the gap between the regular and the Pro models being smaller than it ever has been in previous iterations? I'm Cam from Pocketlint, and this is our review of the standard iPhone 13. And while you're here, if you could tap like, hit subscribe, and the notification bell, that would be lovely. Now the iPhone 13 shares a very similar design to the iPhone 12, though the eagle-eyed will notice a couple of slight changes that differentiate the two. The flat edge design remains and it's still lovely, like a flashback to the iPhone 5 from 2012. Aluminium is retained as the material of choice for the frame, but the antenna bars that sit within it are made from upcycled plastic, with a matte finish. It's not as premium looking as the Pro models, but it's still very nice to look at. On the rear you'll find a glass finish shown here in a very regal looking blue. It's also here that you'll find one of the defining differences between the 2021 and the 2020 models. The camera housing in the top left corner is larger, and the camera lenses, which are also larger, are positioned diagonally rather than vertically. The glass also appears to be a bit more smudge resistant. The second design shift on the iPhone 13 is on the front. The notch at the top of the display has been reduced in size over its predecessor. It's not a huge reduction, but a reduction of around 20% nonetheless, so we'll take that. In a world of punch holes and under display cameras though, many will wonder why Apple isn't pushing the envelope in this department. On the whole, the iPhone 13 isn't drastically different to the iPhone 12, it's almost identical in size. We're talking a mere 0.15 millimeters thicker, but it's worth noting, however, that the old cases won't fit due to that new camera arrangement. So something else to add to the shopping list. While the iPhone 13 isn't as compact and lightweight as the 13 mini, it's still light and comfortable enough to hold, while offering the benefits of a larger screen and battery capacity. Now onto displays, and the iPhone 13 comes with a 6.1 inch panel, which is the same scale as the 13 Pro, although the technology is slightly different. The standard 13 comes with the standard 60Hz refresh rate, while the iPhone 13 Pro goes all the way up to 120Hz, what Apple calls ProMotion, which is basically adaptive refresh rates. That means you'll get smoother scrolling on the 13 Pro, but unless you have the two models side by side, it's not something you're likely to miss out on. That said, with much of the Android competition, such as the Galaxy S21 offering 120Hz as the norm, it surely can't be long before Apple has this technology across its full range. The 13's resolution is the same as the 13 Pro and the same as the older 12 and 12 Pro models, so you get the same sharpness and detail. That means generally it's a great screen. There's a boost in potential brightness over the predecessor, up to 1200 nits for HDR. Again, perhaps something you wouldn't notice unless you were directly comparing the two models side by side. Though extra brightness is always welcome to help counter outdoor brightness on sunny days. Overall though, the 13 has a beautiful display with punchy and vibrant colors, deep blacks, crisp whites, and a great viewing angles. It also has all the technologies that Apple users have come to expect, like True Tone, which automatically adjusts color based on the ambient light, or HDR support, and haptic touch. Moving on to cameras, and the 13 features a dual rear camera system, comprised of a 12 megapixel wide and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's the same camera as you'll find in the 13 mini, but it is an upgrade from the 12, with larger pixels on the main sensor, allowing for better processing potential and higher quality results. There's also sensor shift technology in this phone for the first time in the standard model. It also offers the same features called photographic styles and cinematic video, things we've seen already in the Pro models. Extra features aside, the 13 delivers great results, and this goes for the rear and the front camera setups. Images are full of detail with good colour accuracy and definition. In low light conditions, we did find there was a bit of lag pressing the shutter button before night mode kicked in, but the results are still good. However, there's no night mode portrait on the iPhone 13 as you get with the 13 Pro. And of course you miss out on that third lens, which is a telephoto for optical zoom. You also miss out on macro mode, which is a bit of a shame, as well as missing out on ProRes format video when that eventually comes. The iPhone 13 still has the cinematic video mode though, which enables you to select where you want the focus to be, and that object, person or patch will be tracked throughout the capture. You can change the focus during the video, or you can change it after the fact. It's a fun feature and one that is well worth a try. Also on the video front, 4K HDR recording with Dolby Vision is supported at 60 frames per second with Dolby Vision and HDR kicking in automatically, as was the case with iPhone 12. The photographic styles feature is another one that runs across the whole of the iPhone 13 series, applying a subtle filter to the image. Although be warned, you can only apply the filter ahead of taking a picture. Once it's taken, you can't remove it. 
Now the iPhone 13 runs on the A15 Bionic chip, which is practically the same as what's in the Pro models, and that means it's very fast. Everything loads quickly, the device switches between tasks without any issues, while games and apps run smoothly. The 13 Pro is slightly more powerful despite using the same chip, as it has an extra GPU core for its setup. But in terms of battery life, the 13 is claimed to offer up to 19 hours, and that's not far off the mark in our experience. It offers more impressive battery life than the Mini, as you would expect given its larger capacity. And the physically larger battery capacity means it's certainly an advance over the previous 12. Of course, it does depend on what you do with the phone, and how much of a power user you are, but we were left with around 30-40% to 40 by bedtime on days where we had been testing various camera features and watching movies, whilst also using video features and 5G so it really does last very well. Now, the iPhone 13 runs on iOS 15, which is available for all iPhone devices from the iPhone 6S and later. There are a few extra features on the 13 that you won't find on older models, but mostly it's the same. But you can dive deeper into the features with our tips and tricks video, which I'll leave a link for in a clip somewhere around one of these corners. In the end, although the iPhone 13 isn't drastically different from its 12 predecessor, it does boost the battery life to deliver what will be an ideal choice for those who want a big screen, something you don't get with the Mini, with plenty of power and features. Now you do miss on a handful of nice-to-have features compared to the Pro, including the telephoto zoom lens, macro mode, 120Hz fast refresh rate, and 1TB storage options. But the 13 is still an excellent all-round device that, importantly, doesn't cost quite as much. The 13 is the balanced choice to make, we think, without really having to feel like you're settling for second best, thanks to that combination of power, big screen, and value for money. I've been Cam and Matt Cam Bunton on pretty much every social media network going. Let me know what you think of the basic iPhone 13 range this year. Is it good enough to be labeled Pro even? Or is there just a little bit too much missing? I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.